At 110, the tug engine probably overheated and without any notice, as stated by the pilot, left the location until 1.45. In the meanwhile, nobody or no supervising group members noticed the deviation of the tanker, so no warning was issued. As the process of loading takes 24 to 36 hours, and both pilots are responsible for supervising the process and also positioning the tops to stabilize the tanker, they should work night shifts separately. At about 1.50 a.m., the co-pilot noticed the tanker deviation of over 35 degrees. And informed the pilot who was taking some rest. As the pilot entered the control room, he determined the new position of the tongs and asked for taking the tanker back firmly to its original position. Based on his previous experience in this terminal, the pilot believed that he could resist the tight peak, which was probably going to occur in successive minutes by means of tongs, and afterwards, as the water currents subside or even reverse, the tanker would return to its original location. The same thing had happened in some loadings like the third one. Therefore, if tongs could resist or restore the tanker to a safe position, or if the tanker could return to a safe location because of the reversal of subsurface water currents, they could continue loading. To ensure that, he ordered to take the tanker engine for service checks and asked the tanker captain to be present in command center. The tanker was quickly rotating and the tongs could only slow it down, but they were not capable of holding and restoring it. There was a risk that the tanker would collide with FPS Osiris. Standby vessels were of service, firefighting and anchor handling types, so their movements caused long delays. As a result of the new arrangements of tongs trying to restore the tanker to its original position, the tanker's rotation slowed down. However, it sailed rapidly toward FPS Osiris and moved along with it. It was a horrifying experience. Owing to the length of tandem, which was 100 meters, the tanker bow couldn't proceed more than this length. So after passing this distance, it began to rotate. Tandem bumped into the port side lifeboat of FPSO and damaged some part of it. Vessels were in the position of pushing the tanker and tried hard to prevent the tanker from rotations. But it was not very successful. Therefore, at 2.15, the pilot ordered to stop loading and disconnect the export hose from the tanker, 